Malian brocade is booming. The rebel occupation of northern Mali devastated the whole country's economy, but the producers of dyed brocade went in search of new markets. Since uh, the, the local consumers were not uh, that well endowed because of, uh, as a consequence of the crisis, now they understand that they have to go out and go where the foreign consumers are. And they have indeed, they have uh, been very dynamic of that. This is where it all begins. And every Malian knows that for the finest white brocade cloth in the world, you need to come here to the Grand Marché in Bamako. It's non-stop in here, six days a week. Most of the customers are professional dyers. Top grade brocade is much softer than second grade. Anyone who knows brocade can tell right away what's real and what's fake. The cotton comes from Africa, but the brocade is not made in Africa. The biggest producers are Germany, Austria and the Czech Republic. In Bamako alone, the brocade dyeing sector and its related trades employ an estimated quarter of a million people. She says dyeing my brocade will cost four dollars. In modern dyeing, caustic soda or drain cleaner has replaced the less harmful soda ash. At the end of a day's work, these women do what their grandmothers did, which was throw it all in the Niger River. The result is a disaster for the environment and leads to regular lethal accidents. The diluted caustic soda must have looked like milk to three-year-old Bubaka Konate. His esophagus closed. Undernourished, he nearly died. Specialists at this unit use dilatation to reconnect the throat and stomach, but they only have the means to treat two children a week. The sector provides jobs, so it must be supported. On the other end, the impact on the environment is very bad. And the number of children who are accidentally exposed to the caustic soda is catastrophic. The informal nature of brocade dyeing helped the sector survive Mali's crisis, but it needs structuring for the sake of profit but also for the health of the nation.